Howdy friends! Welcome back to part two of our exploration of AZ's five C's. Copper, cattle, citrus, cotton, and climate. Now Goldie knows where citrus and cotton grow. Howdy, my dear friends. It's good to see you all again. Do you remember what we're learning? Dr. Witt, can you remind them? Well, Goldie, I think I may have a tonic that can color their memory. 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 It starts with R E S P E C T. Respecting you and me, contemplating the five C's. R E S P E C T. The five C's. The Pisces. The Pisces. Copper, cattle, citrus, cotton, climate. These are the ingredients of our current diet. What ingredient shall we taste test next? The citrus groves are my best guess. Down at the Justice Brothers Ranch, it's been a family business since 1928. Since 1928? Yeah, they're doing something great. Let's go investigate. R E S P E C T. Respecting you and me. Howdy friends! Today we're here at the Justice Brothers Ranch in Waddell, Arizona to interview Selwyn. Now his family's ranch has been in the business since 1928. Now that's a lot of years of ranching. Let's go find out what he knows about citrus. I'm Selwyn Justice. I, uh, I'm a fourth generation citrus farmer in the West Valley. Uh, my family also raises uh, cattle and we've done a few other things over the years, but, uh, but citrus has been kind of the pervading uh, thing that we've grown since, since 1928. You know, I'm a fourth generation operator out there, so like my great grandfather, my grandfather, my dad, um, and their respective generations all had their hands in on this operation. My dad's family um, moved out here uh, from Missouri in the, the uh, late teens, early 20s. And the, uh, the reason why they moved out here is just because it was kind of, uh, uh, this was the place to kind of start anew. And my dad's dad, my grandfather, he, uh, he and his brother, uh, for whom the Justice Brothers Ranch is named, um, they, did a, they did a really wonderful job. They came out here. A lot of this ground had never been cultivated before. Um, and they, uh, they, you know, brought a lot of life out of the soil in an area that had not been farmed historically. Um, so I actually have over 75 varieties of citrus. Our oldest trees um, were planted, I think our oldest living trees were planted in the 60s. Um, so this is part of that uh, block, these grapefruit trees are. And grapefruit trees are very hardy, They'll, they, they do last a long time. The, the juice inside of the fruit actually is kind of in these little tiny sacks. It's kind of hard to see, but they're these little tiny things. We kind of, we kind of affectionately refer to them as jewels, but you can kind of see there's like these little juice pockets in there. They're just these little tiny things. Those are called vesicles. 
And when citrus was first growing in the wild, when it was first naturally occurring, the fruit was a lot smaller and these were basically hairs. So as the fruit continued to get bigger and filled up with more juice, the hairs kind of became more and more plump and that's how you get these little vesicles inside. And the vesicles are what make up the segments of the fruit. So if you've ever peeled an orange or a grapefruit or a lemon before, then you've seen that they're kind of in these different segments like this. They're kind of broken up into little pieces. And inside of that, um, that kind of uh, wrapper there is all the little vesicles. And those are what are full of all the juice in there. And uh, I'm very proud of my grapefruit because it's very juicy. The interesting thing about grapefruit too is the tartness of the grapefruit, that's actually caused by a compound that's in the, the skin of the segment itself. So that's where the majority of that tartness comes from. Selwyn's Golden Insight. If you assume the best of everyone, people become a lot less annoying. <laughs> so when I think about how I, I want to be treated and how I want to treat myself, and I extend that to other people and hope that they extend that to me, that's what I think of. I think of just being a little gracious every once in a while. Did you know lemonade is our stay drink? Pour us all a cup and we'll rethink about how much we love those five seeds. Prospector Pete's here to drop a beat. World War I came in and we needed cotton. So that got the U.S. to thinking, what environment is like Egypt? Well, that's good old AZ. That long growth Pima cotton, nicknamed White Gold, bloomed more than 800,000 acres across Arizona. They used it for tires and airplane wing covers. And now it's used for sheets and t-shirts. Uh, I am Sherilyn Homan. And for 25 years, I was the CEO and president of the Southwest Valley Chamber of Commerce. Part of it is my mother was a history major, so there, the love of history probably came through my mother. But I think it's so important for a community to hold on to their history and to really know the reasons and how their communities developed. That's my connection to cotton. Our communities in the Southwest Valley particularly are so tied to uh, cotton and the uh, development of that uh, area that it, it's um, just been fascinating to me. The five C's, which cotton um, is one of the five, but when you think about it, the five C's, uh, three of the five are related to agriculture. Cotton, citrus, and um, cattle you can see how the agricultural industry was so driving to our economic vitality in the state of Arizona. Um, there's a, a group called the Arizona Farm and Ranch Experience. Their goal is to preserve the historic value of the uh, agricultural industry in the development of the state of Arizona, how important cotton has been. And has it evolved? Yes, because other fibers, you know, there was no such thing as nylon or polyester. In the 1920s, your clothing was cotton or burlap, your bedding, so many things, it was all cotton. And I think even today, now, you pay a premium to have clothes that are 100% cotton. The use of cotton has changed. We no longer use cotton in tires. 
Cotton is still important to the economy. Cotton needed the dry land. The, the three things that made Arizona was the railroad, the, um, the Hoover Dam, which brought the water, and the Indians centuries ago had provided the canals. You know, the canals we're using for irrigation were actually put in the ground by the American Indian. Hohokam Canal System. In the Salt and Gila River Valleys, the Hohokam, a prehistoric group of indigenous Americans, dug over 110,000 acres of canal to water their crop using only digging sticks, stones, and baskets. It's considered the largest and most sophisticated prehistoric irrigation system in the New World and the oldest in the United States. Over 700 miles of canals were built by hand between 600 and 1450 CE. Many of these ancient canals are still in use today and have been expanded upon. The Hohokam mastered the desert for at least a thousand years. And a thousand years is a long time by any standard. And uh, so the water, we had have, we have the water, we had the people could get here. Oh, and the gold rush. The gold rush made the people desire to go west and to develop the area around here. So those were three huge factors. And then in the 20s, when we started talking about the five C's in Arizona and the other two C's are copper and climate. Climate has become a driver. Tourism is a much greater influence today than it was in the 20s. Copper has taken a, 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 a back seat. Copper has declined. But that's part, again, I'm going to say it, of the American way. You need, you have a demand and you figure out how to fill it. Well, right now, that demand is not as great in some of the areas that were alive and well in the 20s. But that's part of the beauty of, a, of, our, of the Republic. Sherilyn's Golden Insight. I respect you, I respect what's yours, and we're very different. But we can, re we can respect the differences and actually thrive with the differences because that's how we um, develop a more encompassing uh, environment to live in. Live the golden rule. Potion. Treat others the way that you want to be treated And respect is what you'll be feeding If you want kindness, well, you have to be kind Follow your golden compass and you'll be just fine Hi Goldie, my name's Kira and I love to be respectful Doing the dishes and helping out my family makes me feel really happy Taking care of my pets is another way I can show respect. I love and respect my brother. Showing up respectfully 
feels really good because it makes me feel safe and trusted. Live the golden rule. Remember friends, your golden compass lives with inside you. And you can go in the directions of kindness, empathy, respect, or civility at any moment. I'm sure grateful that we got to learn about the five C's and our compass direction respect. Till we meet again, may your days and nights be laced with light. This has been brought to you by Arizona Golden Rule Educational Experiences.